you'll probably notice that things look a tad different than they have since right after Thanksgiving. All of the things to do with the celebration of the birth of Christ, Christmas, they are not here. Thank you to Dick and Pam and Diane, and I don't know anybody else, but they showed up this week and helped to take things down. So thank you for doing that and helping that process along. I don't know if you noticed, but... Today is a day in the church that is celebrated with a lot of pomp and circumstance in some places and isn't celebrated at all in others. And this is traditionally the Sunday of the baptism of the Lord. In the cycle of the church, it's about beginnings. We've gotten past the Advent season. We had the wise men show up. We're finished with the Sunday of Epiphany. And now we're on to the beginning of the ministry of Jesus and this beginning point. There was a young girl who marched through the kitchen, headed towards the backyard, and she was holding a box filled with all varieties of dolls. And she announced to her mom, I'm going to play church. She went out to the backyard and the mom thought that the dolls were going to be the congregation and the church. And so she watched from the kitchen with interest as she went about her tasks there. And she noticed that She put all the dolls out in a row. And then she appeared with a shovel. And she dug a hole. And the mom thought, what in the world is that about? And later, as she went about things, she came back, looked out the window again, and she noticed the daughter was filling the hole with water. And she thought, well, this is going to be interesting. And then she watched as a little girl would raise her hand up, put her hand out over a doll, and mumble something, and then put the doll in the water and bring it back up. And then on to the next one. She watched this through a couple of cycles, and she could hear that the daughter was saying something, but she couldn't quite make it out. So she slipped out another way so that she would not disturb her daughter as she went about making this production of church. She heard the daughter take the next doll, heard her lift up her arms and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and in the hole you go. (laughs) How much do you really remember about your baptism? Did it have much more significance than that, yet you were dunked? And you came back up. I remember anticipating it. I may have been anticipating it for the wrong reason in the long term, but in the short time, in the short term, the way that was most meaningful to me, I would finally get to take communion. Because my parents had raised me that I was not to have communion until I had been baptized, when I would really understand what that meant. 
I understood as best I could as an 11 or 12 year old young boy. My understanding of what happened that day has changed a lot since then. But for me, it was the excitement of being able to take communion, being more a part of the church. And that was the practice of a lot of congregations and what a lot of kids my age heard from parents and from the church, wait, wait. And you know what? I learned along the way that I'm not sure that it matters exactly when you first take it. Because the important thing is that your awareness of what is happening and what that means to you grows. I remember feeling that excitement and I knew the scripture that said that there was a voice that descended from God above Upon Jesus, a voice that boomed out, you are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. And so, I had a little bit of anticipation about what I would hear, and would I hear some wonderful voice giving me life direction and sending me arrow straight towards purpose. And the first thing I heard after I had emerged from the waters of baptism and was coming out the other side was, hey, Ricky, is the water cold? Not exactly what I expected to hear. And I thought, well, you know, that's the way a lot of things in life are, they're not exactly what we expected. Not exactly what we expected to get, not exactly the way we expected it to go. But it is a point in our lives. Baptism is a point in your lives. Whether it happened when you were a young boy or girl with believer's baptism the way we do in disciples or whether you were baptized as an infant. And if you were baptized as an infant, you don't remember anything about that baptism. But you grew up in the church or you began to learn at some point in your life, maybe even in adulthood, about what baptism meant. Baptism is a beginning. It's a starting point. What happens after the baptism is what really matters. Some people unfortunately think that baptism is the end all be all. You're baptized, you got it made. That's it. That's all she wrote. No. Baptism is a beginning point. One of life's beginning points as a Christian person. Whether it happened when you were young, whether you were first born, whether you were an adult, it's a beginning that you have built upon. Jesus came to be baptized. The church had a problem with that. It's interesting to notice how it's treated differently in the Gospels. Luke 
doesn't mention at all who baptized Jesus. Luke basically says it happened, God spoke to him, the end. Matthew makes John hesitant about baptizing Jesus, saying, no, Jesus, you've got this backwards. I should be baptized by you. And Jesus says, no, this is for the fulfillment of all righteousness. However you want to unpack that. And then Mark's account, Jesus came, John baptized him, and this voice booming out. But it appears in the gospel of Mark that Jesus alone heard this voice. So what was it for Jesus? Why did the church have a problem with it? Well, Jesus, Son of God, what in the world does he need baptized for? Forgiveness of sins? And so the church had this dilemma. What do we make of this? And generally, it's that the rest of Jesus' life is living out that baptism. We see the meaning of that baptism, the human Jesus opening himself up to God and God's leading. Because immediately after he is baptized, he goes out to begin his ministry. He goes to prepare himself and then goes teaching and preaching. And you see in the rest of the gospel and finally in the giving of his life how he followed God's purposes for him. Why were you baptized? That's a good question to ask. For me, truthfully, I went through the class two times. I felt like the first time in fifth grade, I really didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't get baptized after I went through the first time. Maybe I'm a slow learner. I went through it another year in sixth grade, and then I felt more ready. Now, did I know everything I was doing? No, but I was ready for that beginning step, knowing that this was where my journey in this particular way started. But I was being baptized because I wanted to take communion and be a part of the church. I wanted to be a part of that something special because I had been a part of the church. I had felt that love and that care, and I wanted to be more a part of that. Did I understand about being baptized for the repentance of my sins? How much could I have done wrong at 11 or 12 years old compared to what would be before me later in life? So why are you baptized? Why did you make that decision? Perhaps a better question is, what significance does your baptism have on you after that? What significance does your baptism have on you today? How is it shaping your life? Because 
The thing that I think is most significant about baptism is reminding us that we are on a journey. We're baptized. We have a beginning. We are given a map. But it's up to us to make the journey. And along the way are mileposts. And on each milepost, it says, remember your baptism. What do you need to remember about your baptism? Remember this. God called you by name. When you were baptized, you were named. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And God said your name too. You belong to God. God loves you. That shapes your life every day or has the potential to. There are some who say that your baptism is the most significant event in your life, the most important thing that has happened to you. If somebody was to say, what are the things that matter most to you? You might include family, Friends, home, security, that sense of feeling loved. Would you say my baptism? Would you say that was the most important thing in your life or one of the most important things? That's quite a question, isn't it? Because you see, all those other things can disappear in our lives. Our future is uncertain. We do not know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone five years from now. But the thing that we can count on every moment of every day of every year is that you are loved by God. God has called you by name. And God's unconditional love surrounds you and calls you to live with your heart open to the leading of Jesus as the Spirit has filled you and given you understanding that grows and grows and grows far beyond what we first knew or first thought. Nothing can take that love away. Nothing can separate you from that love. That love that you claimed in some way, that love that God placed upon you in your moment of baptism, whenever that happened, whether you remember it or not, you have been marked since that day. Now think about that for a moment. Since your baptism, God's had you right here in the palm of his hand. Jesus has walked with you. Jesus has loved you. When you have fallen down, Jesus has helped to pick you up. When you have known success and joy in life, 
Jesus has been there with you. Whatever you have faced, God holds you with that unending love. One of life's great philosophers is Indiana basketball coach Bobby Knight. I bet you didn't know that. But he has some great insights into things that matter. Now he's no longer the Indiana basketball coach, long since departed from that place. But he was asked a question once, and there was this particular player that the question was about. And this person had shown great promise And the question was asked of Bobby Knight, when is he going to start? And Bobby Knight said, you don't know the game of basketball at all. It doesn't matter who starts. It matters who finishes. Ever since your baptism, you've been on a journey. Ever since your baptism, you've been working to follow Jesus. Sometimes well, sometimes poorly. But you have learned something from each encounter. As a teacher, it has surprised me. You go to these professional developments, and even when I was a pastor and would go to various educational seminars, and inevitably, you might hear somebody say, oh, I've heard all that before. Uh, Nothing new there. Well, I wondered what frame of mind they went into that with. Expecting not to hear anything new, expecting not to take away something. Just another day, another waste of time with that. Because... I tried to look at it differently. Because each time I went to something, there was something I learned, something I saw differently. Something that I could take with me. So one of the questions for us in life is, As you go through each day, what are you going to take from that day? What have you learned? What have you learned about yourself? How has that helped you on the road to finishing? How has that helped you live out your baptism, because that's what it's all about. Our Christian life is living out our baptism. How will you work on finishing? What will you make of every day? And a lot of that will depend on how you answer the question, why am I baptized? What difference does it make? Amen.